أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم تبارك الذي بيده الملك وهو على كل شيء قدير الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا وهو العزيز الغفور الذي خلق سبع سماوات طباقا الذي خلق سبع سماوات طباقا ما ترى في خلق الرحمن من تفاوت فارجع البصر هل ترى من فطور ثم ارجع البصر كرتين ينقلب إليك البصر خاسئا وهو حسير الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا إلى يوم الدين أما بعد we start with the 29th juz. There are approximately 10 surahs in here that we need to cover. So we have, inshallah, a huge task ahead of us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. So we start off with the 67th surah of the Quran. The 67th surah of the Quran, which is Suratul Mulk. Mulk refers to kingdom, sovereignty, ownership. And this is a surah of might, of majesty in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's being in control of everything is declared. And this is a surah which uh, is a Makki surah. Uh, the, the theme is very Mac Meccan in here, 30 verses, and split up into two different sections. And there are numerous ahadiths. This is again another one of those surahs in which we have several different hadiths that talk about its virtues. The hadith have called it the Munjia and the Mani'ah. Mani'ah means the, the, the protector. Munji'ah means the deliverer. So there's numerous hadiths about this, but the idea is, uh, according to Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, hadith related by Ibn Majah, Imam Nasai, Abu Dawud, Tirmidhi, many, many have related it, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, there are these 30, this particular hadith says, there are these 30 verses in the Quran, which if a person recites them, it will, those 30 verses will intercede, sifarish, shafa'a. They will do intercession on the day of judgment for them. And that person essentially will be forgiven because they will debate with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he used to recite me every day. And this is the surah. That's why many, many people, mashallah, uh, the one thing they do, Yaseen in the morning and after Isha, they try to recite Suratul Mulk. Inshallah, if you recite Suratul Mulk, you will get that benefit. And several years ago, I mentioned in a lecture uh, in a masjid, and I said that while this seems so simple, because a lot of people will be thinking that if I'm going to recite this, I can recite it every day after Isha. It's only a three pages, it's only 30 verses. It's actually quite easy to read. I can do this every day. Then maybe I can even be a sinner and so on. I'll still go to paradise. And it doesn't work that way, right? It may be very simple to do, it may be very simple once you start, but to actually get to start it, right, is only for the people who are very determined. Because people who are sinful and so on, maybe they'll just never get the enablement from Allah to be able to even read it, even though it's so easy. Salat is so easy, Turaqat of Fajr prayer is very easy. But again, it's very difficult to do, to get round to doing it. So we ask Allah for tawfiq to let us do this. Now, to move on to its, uh, base, uh, its uh, core message, and there are, I would say, probably three uh, separate themes mentioned in here, and they're all interspersed. Right, so you've got some aspects of the first theme, then a second theme and so on. So number one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala discusses, he discusses his kingdom over everything. So he speaks about the heavens, he speaks about the earth and says that tabaraka alladhi biyadihi al-mulk, blessed is he in whose hand or in whose possession is the kingdom. He is, has omnipotence over everything. He's the one who created death, he cr created life so that he can test you to see which one of you is the best in deeds. And he's the mighty one, but the forgiving one. He's the one who created the seven heavens in tabaqat, in layers, right? Ma tarafi khalqir rahma. This is really a, this is really a, a surah to take outside in the open and read it and contemplate at the same time. Because Allah is saying, look at the heavens. You will not see in the creation of the most merciful one any discrepancy. Then Allah says, farji'il basar. Like, go and look at it again. 
right? Repeat your gaze, repeat your inspection. Hal tara min futur? Do you see any? Do you see any weakness? Do you see any defects there? That's why I say the Quran is actually for a discourse. It's for engagement. It's telling us to do something. And those of us who don't know the meaning, it's really sad that we're reading Surah Al-Mulk and it's telling us, can you look at the heavens and we don't look at it, right? And then Allah says again, ثُمَّ رَجِعِ basar." Now look again a third time, right? Karratain twice more. يَنْقَلِبْ إِلَيْكَ الْبَصَرُ خَاسِئًا Your gaze will come back to you in loss, like defeated, right? وَلَقَدْ زَيِّنَّ السَّمَاءَ الدُّنْيَا بِمَصَابِي So then we adorn the heavens of the world with these lamps. And we also made them رُجُومًا لِلشَّيَاطِينَ Which basically means that we also made them the shooting stars for the shayateen that used to go up. I mentioned earlier that in those days, uh, before the Prophet ﷺ came about, they, the shaytan, the jinn, actually used to go on top of one another to listen to the angels, right, in the heavens. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it such that they would get shot at. Right? And they would be targeted so they could no longer go up anymore. So all of that is discussed. And inshallah, I'll leave it to you to read for yourself to benefit from it. But that's what it is. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about life, death. He talks about honor. He talks about um, uh, degradation, humiliation, uh, wealth, um, uh, richness. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about giving, withholding. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the alimun khabir. He is the all-knower of, uh, of everything. He, he has knowledge of every small thing. And if you read that, you'll figure out all of these things. This is, what men, this is what's mentioned in there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then talks about having made paths in the world for you to walk on. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the safat, right? Which basically means the, those... أَوَلَمْ يَرَوْا إِلَى الطَّيْرِ فَوْكَهُمْ صافات, Verse 19. Don't you see the, the birds flying out there, wings outstretched? And then they bring them in, they contract them, they expand them. That's how they. Ma yumsiku hunna illa Rahman. It is only Rahman, the most merciful, with his compassionate nature, who's keeping them afloat. And today, we've got it beyond that. We've got planes, these big A380s, the, 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 the huge giant of the skies, right? A380, can you just imagine that huge chunk of metal, right? Tons of it. And it's going up there. I'm, I'm amazed every time I fly. I'm just amazed every time I fly. I fly, right? Inna hu bi shayin basir. So uh, thereafter that, the second, so that you, you can check verse 1, 2, 13, 14, 15, 19, 21. It's in that theme. Then you've got Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about some of the evidences of his oneness in the heavens. Speaks about um, the, the, the heavens being a roof. And um, the, the, the lamps in there, which verse we've already read, and uh, making the earth into a place of walking, uh, the water that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, all of that is mentioned. Verses 3 to 5, you can check that out. Thereafter, that in verses 7 to 8, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala discusses the consequence of those who, who deny Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's verses and his signs. And that is a severe depiction, it's a graphic depiction of hellfire. Allah says that إِذَا أُلْقُوا فِيهَا سَمِعُوا لَهَا شَهِيقًا وَهِيَ تَفُورٌ Out of its anger and the bubbling of, of, of the hellfire, you will actually hear its sound. تَكَادُ تَمَيَّزُ مِنَ الْغَيْظِ Right? Due to the anger of hellfire, you know, maybe it's going gonna, it's gonna to blow up. And كُلَّمَا أُلْقِيَ فِيهَا فَوْجٌ سَأَلْ خَزَنَةُ أَلَمْ يَأْتِكُمْ نَذِيرٌ Every time somebody is thrown in there, a group is thrown in there, the guards of hellfire ask, didn't a warner come to you? Like, what's wrong with you guys? Didn't a warner come to you? Why do you end up here for? Allah protect us. And they would say, of course, it, they came to us, but we denied him. And we said Allah didn't reveal anything. So you can inshallah read this and benefit from it. Thereafter, in verse 27, there's a, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَمَّا رَأَوْهُ زُلْفَةً سِيئَتْ وُجُوهُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا When they see the punishment coming close, their faces will change. They'll become ashen. They'll become totally, uh, you can show the fear on them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, This is what you used to call out for, right? And <clears throat> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in this verse, several places he asks, are you, are you, Do you have safety in the, in the heavens that your are you safe from the from the one from those in the heavens are you safe that allah will not send you something and so on all of these questions 
And the final questions are, قُلْ أَرَأَيْتُ مِنْ أَصْبَحَ مَاءُكُمْ غَوْرًا فَمَنْ يَأْتِيكُمْ بِمَاءٍ مَعِينٍ If your water became unpotable, undrinkable, who's going to bring you sweet, pleasant water? That's how it ends. So it's a lot of questions. There's a lot of discourse in there. And that's why I think it strengthens the faith. That's why it's such an important surah to recite every day. Now let's move on to Surah Al-Qalam. Surah Al-Qalam is the chapter of the pen. And the reason why it's called a pen, even though um, it says, Noon wal qalami wa ma yasturoon. Noon, some people have explained the meaning of noon, that it may be an ink pot. Allah knows best. It's definitely huruf muqatta'at. But then he says, Wal qalami wa ma yasturoon. And the pen and that which it writes, the pen and that which it inscribes, the pen and that which it types. Right, because that would be the modern rendering of it. This is actually talking about written work. All right, very important because pen is just an instrument at the end of the day. It's the written work that is of benefit, right, that is useful. You, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that wal qalam, that's an oath. So by the pen and that which it writes because that's very mighty. You are not by the bounty of your Lord an insane individual. You're not mad. Right? And you're going to have huge amount of reward. And you have the highest character. You have the most majestic character. So soon you will see and realize, and they will realize as well, which one of you is the tried one. Allah knows well. So uh, what's interesting here is that this is also a Makki. I mean, most of the surahs in this chapter are going to be Makki. Right? And I'll point out the Madani ones for you. And it's got two sections. And because the Qalam is mentioned there, that's why it's called Surah Al-Qalam. And it's really to magnify the importance of writing, of written pieces of work. Because that is how today we can sit here and we have so much knowledge from the early ones. Uh, you know, from the Greeks and so on. There is so many, I mean, that, that's just an example. Right? In terms of uh, that which has been secured in writing gets then uh, preserved forever. You know, for a very, very long time. And it's because of the use of the pen that we have so much knowledge about the nations before us and about the things that happened be before us. That's why it's a huge ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the pen. So why is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioning that here, even though the pen was there before Islam? So it's saying to the Muslims that you need to start using the pen. There's a benefit of using that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of the first of the creations that He created, even before creating the world, is He created a pen created the light of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi he created the pen, he created the tablet to write on. And he told the pen to write. I've mentioned this before you. Uh, about 40, 50,000 before the creation of the world, pen said, what am I going to write? Allah gave it all the feed and said, you're going to write everything until the day of judgment. So that's the predestination. So by, by saying this and magnifying the concept of the pen, it's actually encouraging. And it is encouraging study, encouraging reading, writing, teaching. Because uh, as you know, that's, that was Iqra, Bismi Rabbika Ladi Khalaq. The first revelation was read in the name of your Lord. And you know what's really interesting is that Surah Al Qalam, according to many, is the second surah to be revealed. After Iqra, Bismi Rabbika Ladi Khalaq, Surah Al Qalam is the second. We're going to be looking at, we, uh, well, we're going to look at the first surah next week, uh, sorry, tomorrow, right? Tomorrow. Um, as most likely everybody's Eid is not tomorrow, alhamdulillah. Right? I think that's pretty much agreed now, alhamdulillah. We've got 30 days now. Um, and Surah Al-Qalam is the second. And then you'll see Surah Al-Muzzammil, Surah Al-Muddathir. We'll discuss those. So we are reading the first four surahs. So this is the second. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after Iqra Bismi, is saying the pen. Now, you need to educate people with the pen. And subhanAllah, I think what it was is that this was, you, know, you see, the tradition of the Prophet ﷺ or the civilization, Medina was an oral tradition. They didn't write much. Most people didn't have to read and write. There was an oral tradition, a lot of memorization, poems and so on. All right? However, soon that was all going to change. Writing was going to take over the world. And as we go along, there are probably more people writing today than ever before. Right? Because before, um, you, you call people on the phone you wrote, a, very few people wrote letters. People wrote letters, but not as much as the number of people who text today, right? Or WhatsApp today, right? A lot of it is writing. So I think the amount of writing today is a lot more than before. 
And that is just seemingly going to increase, whether you write with a pen or whether you write with a virtual pen, an eye pen, or whatever it is, make a difference. I mean, even the iPad, after everything, after typing, it has to go back to using a pen, which costs like 70 to $100. Dollars. It's crazy, right? It's just a fake pen. It's an, you know, it's an artificial pen, a smart pen, whatever you want to call it. The pen is going to live, it looks like, right? The pen is going to live. It's just you're going to have to pay more for it because people are going to make money from it. So I think this is the, that you need to be part of that. You need to be part of that revolution. You need to be part of that advancement. So do not ever miss out on that. Aside from that, carries on. There are three, uh, I guess, three major themes in here. One is the, uh, in the beginning, which I've already read a part of, the Prophet Sallallahu status uh, is mentioned, his akhlaq and his character is mentioned, his conduct is mentioned. And all of this is sworn. This is all oaths are taken. Right? Uh, sorry, the, the oath is taken for all of these facts. Right? That is the point Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, emphasizing here. And he's going to have huge reward. That's why there's a famous hadith which many of you must have heard from Muslim Abu Dawud and Nasai and Aisha radiallahu anha. When she's asked about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, she says that his khuluq was the Quran. And this is what proves it. Inna ka la'ala khuluqin azim. The Quran is the written work. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam is the movie that shows us how to how the quran is practiced right that's that's what uh, the uh, that's what the prophet sallallahu was there he is to show us the quran in in action la ilaha illallah while he mentions while allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the akhlaq of the prophet sallallahu alaihi he goes on to mention his foes his enemies and how they 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 were so mean like for example allah says wala tuti' kull halafin maheen do not obey <clears throat> the, these are the, these are the, <clears throat> the various different um, characteristics provided for the uh, for, for the enemies. Right? Number one, they swear a lot. Swear means they swear too many oaths. Mahin, they're, they're very lowly. Hamazim masha imbinamin. They they keep cursing others. They keep saying bad things about others. They do a lot of tail bearing, and they manna'in lil khair. They prevent good from going to other people and they're always transgressing and they're big sinners. A number of other things are mentioned here which you can look at inshallah. Very arrogant that they've been given that they've been given wealth and children. And when our verses are revealed to them, they just say that the, these are basically made up stories of the people of the past. And you can inshallah read that. This is very interesting. There was a guy in Makkah Mukarramah, very wealthy. Initially he had no children. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him a lot of children and he had a lot of wealth. And he was very unique in that sense. People used to actually call him Wahid. Now Wahid could mean unique and it could also mean loner. So some say it's because he didn't have any children first, he had a lot of money. Or because he was unique in his own style. Now when the people of Makkah, Mukarrama, uh, when the people of Makkah, they decided to come together to decide that when the next Hajj season comes, how are we going to... Um, how, how, what are we going to tell people? Because they're going to be affected and influenced by what the Prophet Sallallahu reads to them. So we need a story that's uniform. It's the same. We're on the same page. So some said, call him a magician. Some said, call him this, call him that, call him that. Said, so this Walid says, no, I know magicians. I know that. And he was actually quite impressed by the Quran. And it mentions that he actually knew about it. He, he, he believed, he, I mean, he knew inside, he appreciated it. But because he was so arrogant and everything like that, he didn't want to listen. So he said, finally he agreed that none of, these, none of these claims will stick because people will be able to tell the difference between poetry and the Quran and magic and the Quran. He says, probably the only thing that we can use is sorcerer. The reason is that through magician sorcery, they separate between families. Because the Prophet Sallallahu whenever somebody believes him, they separate from their family, right? So maybe that's the only thing we can see, we can say. So that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes him to Taskia. And you know what's really interesting? This Walid ibn al mughira one of his sons was Walid ibn al walid All right, Walid ibn al walid So his son is Walid. He became a Muslim. After, the, after he was ransomed by Khalid bin Walid, his brother. So Khalid bin Walid is also the son of Walid ibn, uh, walid ibn Mughira. So this is the father of Khalid bin Walid. Walid ibn Walid became Muslim first. Khalid ibn Walid, who came to ransom him, came, became Muslim much later. The second thing that's mentioned here speaks about uh, a specific uh, people of a certain orchard. And the story there, this was well known. This story was well known, right? Among the Arabs, it was well known. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions it in detail. This particular orchard is a lush orchard that was probably somewhere closer to Yemen. 
And mashallah, the owner of it was very righteous and he used to give to a lot of poor people and he used to spend a lot from his orchard. He died, but he, then his children became greedy. They, they started making excuses that, oh, it's not enough, we're not getting enough of an income and so on. They stopped giving to the masakin who used to depend on that. The masakin means the poor people. So because they became arrogant, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that it was overcome and it basically was destroyed and they all started wringing their hands that had we listened and had we done good and so on. And they say that maybe Allah will give it back to us. Yubdilana khayra minha. Maybe Allah will give us back. They, re they reflected. Allah says, this is the way the punishment is. Allah's, pu Allah's punishment of the hereafter is even more severe. If only they know. Thereafter, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala... <clears throat> see, um, this is a story for those people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given a lot of wealth to. Right? And, but the problem is, um, they're so tight and they're so stingy that they just want to keep reinvesting their money. A lot of wealthy people like that. They've got a lot of wealth, but if you go to ask them for a loan, they never have any spare cash. Everything is in a new investment. It's in a new investment. A building here, a building there, and stocks here, um, uh, uh, an investment there, in a company here. They've got no money to help anybody with. The only thing they just about do, something if they're decent enough, is they pray zakat, right? And this is sad because such people who've got a lot like that, and you know, I, I, I've come across people like this, right? May Allah not make us of them, where their money is always. So if somebody told me a long time ago that if you want money, you go to people who are not so enterprising. Otherwise, those people will never have money, right? So the idea is that for some people, they actually set up certain businesses and the benefit of those businesses, all the profits are actually for good causes. So if you've got several businesses, then maybe that's what you should do. And you'll see, you'll actually get much more from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you look at verse 35, Allah says, Afa naj'alu al-muslimina kal mujrimin Should we make Muslims the same as non-Muslims? So, uh, sorry, as, as uh, transgressors? Ma lakum kayfa tahkumun? What's wrong with you? Why, uh, what kind of a judgment is that? And I'm going to have to carry on. Thereafter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala discusses the severity of the day of judgment by verse 42. That's a day when Allah, there's a metaphor that's used here or it's a very... It's an ambiguous expression here. We leave it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Essentially saying that when that day becomes severe, people are going to be asked to prostrate. And uh, some people will do, but those who never used to prostrate in the world, they would not be able to prostrate. Their back is going to have like an iron rod or something. It's going to become straight. So they will, they'll keep falling down if they try to prostrate. Right? So that's mentioned there. And at the end of it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala discusses some of the other difficulties of the Day of Judgment. And then Allah finishes off by saying, وَمَا هُوَ إِلَّا ذِكْرُ لِلْعَالَمِينَ In fact, you know this last two verses, 51 and 52, I'll give you a secret about them. Many ulama mention, or many practitioners mention that this, وَإِنْ يَكَادُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَيُزْلِقُونَكَ بِأَبْصَارِهِمْ This is about the ayn, right? That those who disbelieve, they look at you with their eyes, with their gaze, when they hear the dhikr, and they say that you're a majnoon. So many ulama have said, many people have actually tested this, and I have as well personally, that if you think that somebody's got the ayn, like your children, that they've got the evil eye on them, recite these last two verses from وَيَكَادُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا and blow on them. And inshallah, I've seen that it, 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 it does have a profound effect. Right? So that, that's the last two verses of Surah, uh, that's the last two verses of uh, Noon wal Qalam. Okay, now we need to move on to Surah al haqqa which is also a Makki Surah, 52 verses, two sections. And in there, as I mentioned to you the other day, al qariah al haqqa al waqia these are all names of the same event, which is the Day of Judgment. al haqqa just means from the Haqq, the, the imminent event, the imminent happening, the imminent thing which is going to happen, which is the Day of Judgment. So Allah starts off, it's very beautiful, this Surah, it's very lyrical. Right? And we don't have the time to enjoy it right now in that sense. al to mal haqa Do you know what this imminent event is? Right? How would you know what this imminent event is? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first discusses some of the past nations. And it's La ilaha illallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala discusses some of the past events. Uh, Qawm of Aad, Thamud and uh, what happened to them. That's from verse 1 to 12. You'll see that. Thereafter that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, mentions some of the events of the Day of Judgment and that's actually the very prominent part of this, uh, of this surah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَإِذَا نُفِيْ He starts off by saying, فَإِذَا نُفِيْ خَفِي السُّورِ Verse 12. 
Nafkhatun, fi suri nafkhatun wahida, when the first blast of the trumpet, um, this is, what the, you know, the earth, the mountains, the, the, the heavens, all of that will just go, right? Will just be into pieces. And that is the day when the event, that, that is when the waqi'ah will take place. The, the event will take place. And talks about the heavens, talks about the angels being on the side coming down, right? It's just like, imagine that, you know, there's been an attack and all the troopers have just come in and that's it. Right, so it's talking about the angels who've come in. There's no fighting against the angels. Then after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that people are then going to be presented for their, for their accounting. And this is the most prominent part here. The one, Allah says in 19, right, the one who's given their book in the right hand, he's going to say, I mean, you know when, you're given, when you've just received your grades, you jump up and down, you're going to say, look at my grades, alhamdulillah, look at what I got, look at it, I got straight A's, I'm in, you know. That's exactly. The person is going to say, ha um. Come along, see this, recite, uh, re read, re re check my record out. I knew, now I had thought very clearly that I was going to come to my reckoning. He's going to be in, in the ultimate bliss in the Jannat, in Aliya Qutufu, and then Jannah is mentioned. And then he mentions that as for the one who's going to be given the record in the left hand, as soon as you're given the, the record in the left hand or behind your back, as mentioned in Surah, uh, in, in tomorrow we'll read that, right? He's going to say, Ya laytani lam uta kitabiya. Oh, how I wish I was not given this book of deeds. Walam adri ma hisabi. I didn't know all of this reckoning. You know, I, I wish I'd not known this. Ya laytaha kanatil qadi. I wish that was the, the death was the end. That there was none of this that I had to deal with. My wealth did not become use for me. My influence, my power, uh, basically is all gone and finished now. Allah will then say, خُذُوهُ فَغُلُّوهُ Grab him. Right? ثُمَّ الْجَحِيمَ صَلُّوهُ Enter him into hellfire. ثُمَّ فِي سِلْسِلَةٍ ذَرْعُهَا سَبْعُونَ ذِرَاعًا 70 cubit length of chain. Put him into that. He never used to believe in Allah. And he never, you see this is always mentioned. Today, you're going to see several mentions, and this is actually, I'm going to go after this and donate, right? Especially for this reason. They would not encourage to feed the poor people. Today, he has no friend. It's just mentioned up over and over. You would not encourage. You need to actively do that. I know it's not for Once you've given your zakat, nothing else is obligatory, aside from sadaqatul fitr. But... When this is mentioned so many times about people who never would do that, right? It means that we should do that. And Allah then mentions the hellfire. And then towards the end of this surah is beautiful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions. You see, le let me explain this to you. When this surah was revealed and the Prophet ﷺ was reciting it, right? In the, in the haram, in the Kaaba, by the Kaaba he was reciting, it was night time. And uh, this was when he was being persecuted in Makkah Mukarramah. Umar radiallahu must have gone there because he had some problem at home. So he decided to go and spend time there. He was not a Muslim at that time. All right? This was before he became Muslim. So he started hearing the Prophet ﷺ reciting, Al-Haqqatu mal-Haqqatu wa ma adraka mal Became mesmerized. But he hid behind the cloth of the Kaaba so that he wouldn't be noticed. Right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions all of the Prophet ﷺ recited all of this. And then he gets to the end. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions... And he's responding to the allegations of these people, what they used to say to him. So he's saying, فَلَا أُقْسِمُ بِمَا تُبْصِرُونَ وَمَا لَا تُبْصِرُونَ I swear by that which you see and that which you do not see, by all of these events. إِنَّهُ لَقَوْلُ رَسُولٍ كَرِيمٍ He is, the, sorry, this Qur'an is the, are the words or the statement of a noble messenger. So as soon as, he, as, soon as the Prophet ﷺ recited that, Umar radiallahu anhu in his heart said, he, this is a poet. Like what a wonderful poet he is. And immediately the next verse, which is verse 41, Allah says, وَمَا, and the Prophet ﷺ recited it. So then Umar radiallahu anhu is interacting with this. Okay, if he, so he's not, a, he's not a poet, so little do you believe. So then Umar said in his heart, okay, if he's not a poet, then he must be a soothsayer. And immediately the Prophet ﷺ recites the next verse, وَلَا بِقَوْلِ كَاهِنْ Nor is, are these the words of a soothsayer, قَلِيلًا مَا تَذَكَّرُونَ So little do you take reminders, تَنْزِيلٌ مِّنْ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ It's a revelation from the Lord of the worlds. 
And subhanAllah, Umar radiallahu anhu said, this is Ibn al-Jawzi, he's related this from him in, uh, in the Muntadham, in his book called the Muntadham, that this is when the seeds of Iman came into the hearts of Umar radiallahu anhu, but he had to take that event with his sister to actually tip him over and to believe. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then finishes this off, that um, Allah says, wa innahu, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala discusses the Quran at the end with all of these different things. It's a reminder for the muttaqeen. And um, the, the last part is, wa innahu lahakkul yaqeen. It is the convincing truth and glorify the name of your mighty Lord. Let us move on to next verse, Surah Al Ma'arij. Ma'arij, plural of Ma'araj, which means stairway. Ascension, some way to climb up. It's a Makki surah as well, 44 verses, two sections. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts it off by saying that a questioner is asking about the inevitable punishment, right? For which the disbelievers will have no way to repel it and no defense, which will be from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that, that's how it begins because they were always asking for the punishment. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, you know, they were saying, they, they used to make fun and they would say, okay, bring on the punishment so at least we can deal with it in this world before the hereafter. Thereafter that, there's a, there's a discussion of the, the day of judgment. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you look at verse 8 and 9, it says, when the, when, the day of, when, when the final hour occurs, it will be like the heavens when you look up, it's going to be like the, they're going to become like dregs of oil, like really ugly looking dregs of oil. You know, dregs of oil, what you get at, at the bottom of an oil change. That's what it's going to look like. And the, the, the mountains are going to become like dyed wool. Yeah, Allah, what a scene that's going to be amazing. I just, you know, and then Allah mentions that that's a day when nobody's going to ask about anybody. Everybody's going to be independent, right? Everybody's going to be independent. Nobody's going to be asking about anybody. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then talks about the people of hellfire. And Allah then talks about the insan, the revealing some things about the human being. If you look at verse 1920, Allah says that insan has been created always with anxiety, right? Meaning that's one of the weaknesses of the human, they get anxious all the time. They get perturbed all the time. I've got a lecture on this, I forget what it's called, it's on Zamzam Academy. And number two, they get very upset and everything when, they, when any uh, negative thing happens to them. And if any good thing happens to them, then they start preventing the good from going to others. And this is how Allah describes the good people, except the ones who pray salat. They don't have these problems. You want to remove your tensions and your anxieties, start praying Salat because it says, except the people who pray Salat. And three times the people who pray Salat are mentioned in here. Three times. Right at the beginning of this discussion, except the ones who pray, those who are regular on their prayer, those who have a portion of their wealth allotted for people who ask and those who don't ask, but who are in need. Those who give Sadaqah, no, you, who believe in the last day, those who believe in the day of judgment, those who are frightened of the punishment, so they have an element of fear in them, and they are very protective over their private parts. So they're very chaste. Every time that's discussion in the Quran, like here in Surah Al Furqan, etc., Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then carries on with that discussion. Everything else just mentions it bit by bit, but in this one, He mentioned in detail, unless it's with their wives or their concubines. Right? There, they're not blameworthy. Anybody who, choose, uh, who seeks anything beyond that, then they are already transgressing. So that's already telling us. And then these are people who are very trustworthy. They fulfill their trust and their covenants. And they, are, they, they, they stand by their witnessing. Right? So they don't f uh, do false witnessing. And then finally, to end it, Allah says again, those who are very mindful of their prayer. So three times prayer is mentioned. You know, if you're listening to this tafsir and you read the Quran and you do, not you, know, you do not become regular in your prayers after this, then this has been a wasted exercise. Allah forgive us and protect us from that. The minimum that we should take away from this is that we become regular in our prayer. Inshallah, that should help everything else. Then after that, it says, fi jannati mukramun. These are the people who are going to be honored in paradise. Now, it carries on. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions several other things here which 
uh, at the end Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes an oath uh, by the Lord of the East and the West and uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says that let these people mess around if they're doing that soon everybody is going to know Allah says after he swears that oath he says that he has inna laqadirun we have absolute ability ala an nubaddila khayra min that we change you for better people we change you for better people and what we can take from here is that sometimes people who've been born muslims and who've become complacent they're actually overtaken by by uh, by converts or reverts right who do much better and that is one of that that is what we understand from this verse 40 40 and 41 right and by that dhalika al-yawm alladhi kanu yu'aduna allah subhanahu wa ta'ala completes the chapter we move on to surah nuh surah nuh is the one surah uh, you know, Nuh alayhi salam story, we've read it over and over again in different places. But this is, the entire surah is about, surah, uh, is about Nuh alayhi salam. And essentially it expresses his da'wah. And it's one of the best guides that you can have for da'wah. Anybody who's in to propagating, which we should all be, we should listen to this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we sent Nuh alayhi salam. Right, it's got 28 verses. And it's got two, uh, two sections in there. He's called a shaykh al-anbiya. Because he is the first messenger after Adam alayhi salam. Very, very long life. One of the longest of the prophets. And uh, he, mashallah, the da'wah he made was to the extreme. As Allah, subha as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions about him, that uh, he says, if you look at verse 5 and 6, I called unto my people night and day. He would make da'wah at night and in the daytime. right? But they just kept running away. I called unto them, you know, I called unto them in all ways. Inni da'utum jihara, right? I called unto them openly, thuminni a'lantunam wa asratulam israra. I called unto them privately. I, I promised them things. I said, if you do istighfar and you seek forgiveness, Allah will send you huge amounts of rain. Allah will assist you with wealth and with children and will give you orchards and will make you lakes and so on. Why don't you listen? And this is where we get the idea that from istighfar, you get these benefits. So mark those verses. This is uh, verse 12. Uh, verse, uh, I guess, 10, 11, and 12. Just look at that. It's the fadila of istighfar. Okay? They did not listen. So then eventually, he made a dua. He said, and look at the dua he makes. وَقَالُوا لَا تذر, uh, Sorry. He, he told them that you need to stop worshipping all these idols, right? They, they're idols. Why don't you leave Wad, Suwa, Yahuth, Ya'uk, and Nasr? They've caused so many people to deviate. What's wrong? Why do you, why do you call on to these? They didn't listen. So he makes a dua. وَقَالَ نُوحُ الرَّبِّ لَا تَذَرْ This is verse 26. لَا تَذَرْ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ مِنَ الْكَافِرِينَ دَيَّارًا <coughs> Do not leave a single disbeliever. This is probably the only time in history when all the disbelievers were, were, were only the believers survived. That is the huge flood that came. And then uh, he makes a dua for himself. And that's how the, the surah ends. Thereafter that, the next surah, I mean, it's a very self excellent You can read it for yourself. The, second, the next surah is Surah Al-Jinn, which is the 72nd surah of the Quran. It has 28 verses. It's a very unique surah, a very enigmatic surah. A lot of people are very interested in this. And they have a lot of ideas about this surah that if you want... To subjugate a jinn, there's some ideas that you sit in a circle, recite this 40 times or something, and eventually jinn will come to you. And I've never tried it. Wallahu a'lam. All right. I can't say it's not going to happen. I can't say it's going to happen. Right. But I'm saying be careful. All right. Because jinn are not easy people to deal with, and it's haram for us to actually mess around with jinn like that anyway. All right. You you should you shouldn't do that. Anyway, uh, to move on. This, the first part, the, the, the first two thirds of this is essentially about jinn. And mashallah, um, th there's a lot that's told about jinn. So, for example, it mentions that the jinn are supposed to be scared of human beings. But the reason why they became a bit more arrogant and everything is because of this idea that jinn can harm us and, also, and, and so on and so forth. So, that made them a bit arrogant. It made them a bit brave. So, that's why it mentions that how, it, how things got a bit deviated is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that there were certain men from among the human being who used to seek protection from some jinn. So that caused them to become, become more problematic. Right? So what 
what's uh, the one thing I want to mention to you is that the jinn also have Muslims and non-Muslims. They have various different religions in there as well, and I'll, I'll show you how that's the case. When somebody first mentioned, oh, you get Hindu jinns, you get, I mean, of course, if they're in India, you know, uh, or Sikh jinns, or uh, what do you call it, um, Christian jinns, Jewish jinns, and so on and so forth. You'll, you'll understand is that we got an indication of this from the Quran as well. Of course, you get the good ones, you get the bad ones, you get the sinners and everything like that. They're just like us, because they are also responsible like us. They, they felt that there was something going on. They could sense a cosmic difference in, in the environment, in, in the heavens, because now they couldn't go back up when the Prophet ﷺ was sent as a prophet. So they decided to figure this out. So that's why it says that, وَأَنَّا لَمَسْنَ السَّمَاءَ You know, when we go to the heavens, we, we're, we, we, we're no longer able to go there. And we used to sit in places to eavesdrop, and now we get shot at. So... Uh, we don't know whether it's something evil that has been intended with the inhabitants of the earth, uh, of the earth or is it something of goodness? So they're, they're concerned. What's going on here? Now it mentions here is, وَأَنَّا minna الصَّالِحُونَ In verse 11, and some of us are righteous and some of us are less than that. Um, what happened is, the Prophet ﷺ was, I think he was on his way to the Suq Ukadh. Suq Uqad, if you check where it is today, it's actually closer to Ta'if. So it's kind of west, uh, sorry, east. East of, uh, uh, of Medina Munawwara, uh, Makkah Mukarramah. So that's kind of the area in a place called Nakhla. That's where he was. And he was leading the Fajr prayer. And in that, these jinn were passing by to find out what's going on. They're quite perturbed at what's going on in the world. Is it good or bad? And then when they heard the Quran being recited by the Prophet Sallallahu these were special jinn of the Nasibin jinn, right? That's when they said, this is it. This is what's come down, and that's why it's mentioned here, وَأَنَّا لَمَّا سَمِعْنَا الْهُدَى and These were such good jinn that as soon as they heard the guidance, آمَنَّا بِهِ Right, we believe in it. Because anybody who believes in his Lord, then, you know, he can't fear any wrong and so on. And among us are the Muslimin, and among us are those who are not so Muslim. Right, who are disobedient, they're off the track. What's interesting about the word kist means justice and balance. Now, if you say muqsit, iqsat, that means to be just. If you say qasit, qasata, that actually means to be off balance. It's a really strange verb that is. All right? Th those who understand Arabic will appreciate that. فَمَنْ أَسْنَمَ فَأُولَٰئِكَ تَحَرَّ Whoever believes, so these jinn were such that not only did they believe, they actually went and they started propagating to others. And they, they, tried, they, they told others that they should listen as well, meaning the other jinn. And then they said, well, some listened and some did not listen. In fact, verse th 3 shows you, وَأَنَّهُ تَعَالَى جَدُّ رَبِّنَا مَتَّخَذَ صَاحِبَةً وَلَا وَلَدًا Our Lord is not somebody who will take a, a spouse or a child. That goes to give an understanding that maybe they're referring to the Christian jinn who used to believe that. Right? Anyway, the last part of this surah, the third part, it's from verse 20. That is where the Prophet ﷺ is told to declare uh, his belief in Allah and his not doing shirk and all of the rest of that discussion. You can inshallah uh, read that for yourself. So the final part is where the Prophet ﷺ says, لِيَعْلَمَ أَنْ قَدْ أَبْلَغُوا رِسَالَاتِ رَبِّهِمْ وَأَحَاطَ بِمَا لَدَيْهِمْ وَأَحْصَى كُلَّ شَيْءٍ عَدَدَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala finishes uh, the surah with that. Thereafter that, we start with Surah Al-Muzzammil and Surah al Muddathir. Surah Al-Muzzammil is the second, uh, sorry, the third surah after Noon Wal Qalam. Uh, so Iqra Bismi, the Noon Wal Qalam, and then Surah Al-Muzzammil is the third surah to be revealed, right? At least, you know, and so the fourth one is the next one, which is Surah Al-Muddathir. They both have similar meanings, Muzzammil, Muddathir. Basically means the enwrapped one, the one who's wrapped up, the one who's enveloped in something. And... There's two opinions about that. One is that this is either referring to the first revelation, that when the Prophet ﷺ came back from that, he was perturbed, he was scared, he was uh, concerned. And when you're that, you get wrapped up. It just helps you to comfort yourself, right? So that, that is one occasion. There's another occasion where uh, people used to say different things to him, like you're a magician and so on. The Prophet ﷺ got a, bit, uh, got a bit worried and he wrapped himself up. Allah knows best. Either, one, either way, these are very early surahs where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is actually calling on to him directly. Ya ayyuhal muzzammil. O enwrapped one. O wrapped up one. 
قُمِ اللَّيْلَ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا This one is all about tahajjud. Right? You need to stand at night and pray except a bit. Right? أَوْ إِنْ قُسْ مِنْهُ Or you can lessen it slightly. Or you can do more than that. وَرَتِّلِ الْقُرْآنَ تَرْتِيلًا And do a proper recitation of the Qur'an. Because um, if you do this tahajjud, we're going to be giving you a really burdensome task. And that's why ulama mentioned that those who do tahajjud, they're the ones who gain the ma'rifah of Allah. Right? Although it's not obligatory for us, this is a command for the Prophet ﷺ, the tahajjud was wajib for the Prophet ﷺ, but not for the ummah. That's why Allah says, إِنَّا سَنُلْقِي عَلَيْكَ قَوْ إِنَّا نَاشِئَةَ اللَّيْلِ هِيَ أَشَدُّ وَطَأَوْمُ وَأَقْوَ مُقِيلًا إِنَّا لَكَ فِي النَّهَارِ سَبْحًا طَوِيلًا Literally speaking, you've got a lot of swimming, long swimming in the daytime. Sabaha generally refers to sibah, it means to swim. That is, you're full of activity during the daytime. You've got to do commanding, you've got to do teaching, you've got to do leading, you've got to do counseling. So it's your night time that you need to spend between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? So this is telling the da'i that you can't just go and give da'wah as a vocation. There's a lot of people in vocations of da'wah where they get hired and they literally just do it as a da'wah. You have to have the fervor and you have to support your da'wah by worshipping at night, by doing the ibadat at night. Otherwise your da'wah is empty. The way to get power of your da'wah, whether you're uh, trying to convince others of Islam or you're trying to convince others of the, the way or to come to the masjid, whatever it is, you need to stand at night and do that. This has to go together. This is the way the Prophet ﷺ did it. Uh, a lot of discussion about the Prophet ﷺ here, obviously, and... Uh, for spiritual uplifting, you need to make tahajjud, start off with Ramadan, and then carry on afterwards. Thereafter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is discussing, discussing the recitation of the Quran at night. And that's where we get some huge benefits from that. So, thereafter, that, at the end of the day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, mentions, uh, making it easy for the people that you don't have to do tahajjud, you can recite whatever that you want. Aqimus salat, atu zakat. You know, establish prayer, give zakat, give Allah a goodly loan. Whatever you send forth for yourself of good, you'll find it by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is superior for you, that has a huge reward. And seek forgive, forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's all forgiving and all merciful. Okay, the next surah is Surah Al-Muddathir, which is slightly longer. It has 56 verses. But again, it's just split up into two sections. It has several more themes in there. Again, Allah tells the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya al muddathir O one who's enveloped. قُمْ فَأَنذِرْ Stand up and warn people. وَرَبَّكَ فَكَبِّرْ It's beautiful. And your Lord, magnify. Your clothing, purify. Uh, in purity, abandon. And وَلَا تَمْنُنْ تَسْتَكْثِرْ وَلِرَبِّكَ فَاصْبِرْ And be patient for your Lord. So because remember, these are the, 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 uh, the Prophet ﷺ is now being told to give da'wah. There's going to be a lot of difficulties that he's going to have to face. So he's being told to make sabr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala discusses uh, first the mujrimin and the, that means the wrongdoers and uh, warns them about the punishment and then after that one of the worst enemies again of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, who I already told you about the father of Khalid bin Walid I hate to say that right? and that's why many places where he's mentioned they don't mention he's the father and Khalid bin Walid used to actually feel quite upset every time because I mean he, there was not much he could do about it anymore but this was Walid ibn Mughira, Mughira again Right? That he used to listen to the Quran, he knew it was correct, that it was Allah's words, because he knew nobody else could write that. I mean, he told the others about that, he told the disbelievers about that. But his kufr, it was just, he, he still calls you all of these names. So Allah then says in all of this, Sa'uslihi saqar, we're going to enter him into hellfire. Do you know what this hellfire is? It doesn't leave anything. Right? And then Allah mentions the hellfire and um, has that discussion. Thereafter that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about those who carry the arsh and everything. And Allah said something, one of the verses which is very important here is, Kullu nafsim bima kasabat rahina illa ashab al yameen. Allah swears an oath by several things. Kalla wal qamar, by the moon. Wal layli idh adbar, by the night, by the morning, right? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's saying that um, every kullu nafsin bima kasabat rahina, every nafs, every person is going to be mortgaged um, by whatever they've earned, right? 
illa ashab al yameen except for the people of the right who will be in jannat they'll be questioning one another uh, they'll be speaking to one another about the transgressors that what entered you into the hellfire they would say look what what do you think the hellfire people are going to say when the muslim when the believers are going to ask them what entered you to the hellfire they're going to say this lam naku min al musallin we never used to pray salat can you anybody who reads the quran right Maybe the reason why you don't pray Salat is because you don't read the Qur'an. There's no way you can not read the Qur'an once you read, not read Salat, when, what, not pray Salat once you read the Qur'an. Number two, We never used to feed the poor person. Today, believe me, when I was going through this, I was like, I better go and make a donation today so I can directly try to. And this is encouragement for the rest of you, right? We used to engross ourselves with all of the futile and all the problematic behavior of these people who used to talk against Islam and everything. And we used to reject the hereafter. Until the, the conviction came to us. But now nothing is of any benefit to them. And then Allah depicts what's going to happen to them. And uh, they say, They can't remember except what Allah subhanahu if Allah wills. Uh, and uh, those who do remember Allah is who are Ahlul Taqwa wa Ahlul Maghfirah. Allah is the possessor of taqwa, uh, uh, he's the giver of taqwa, he's the giver of maghfirah, right? So that's how this surah ends. Uh, surah Al-Qiyamah is the next surah. This is one of my uh, favorite surahs. I just love this surah because it's, the lyrical quality is amazing. Unfortunately, we don't have too much time to be able to demonstrate to you the benefit of this surah in terms of uh, the, 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 the way the, the wording is. But look, if you look at this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا أقسم بيوم القيامة ولا أقسم بالنفس اللوامة إضامة بنانة أمامة قيامة That is all about the day of judgment, how Allah has the ability to bring everything together, right? Thereafter that, actually, uh, th this is just saying, th this is actually about the power of Allah. So it's uh, uh, uh. Thereafter that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then takes us to show us what's going to happen at death. فَإِذَا بَرِقَ الْبَصَرْ قَمَرْ قَمَرْ مَفَرْ وَزَرْ مُسْتَقَرْ أَخَرْ When that discussion finishes about that, it goes back to the human being. And that it says that the human beings, they know, um, the, the human beings, they know about themselves, right? They know exactly, they, 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 they know what they're doing, they know what excuses and everything. All of that is, again, it changes again. It's akhar, uh, it's basira, ma'adira, bih, qur'ana, qur'ana, bayana, ajila, akhira. Right? Then it, then it actually moves on to the day of judgment. Right? So there it says there'll be some faces which will be resplendent. Other faces on that day will be downcast. Right? So that's talking about the good and bad people. And uh, thereafter that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changes the theme again from verse 26. So it's كَلَّا إِذَا بَلَغَتِ التَّرَاقِيَ وَقِيلَ مَنْ رَاقَ وَظَنَّ أَنَّهُ الْفِرَاقَ وَالْتَفَّتِ السَّاقُ بِالسَّاقُ إِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ يَوْمَئِذٍ الْمَسَاقُ just, just the effect of that with the meaning is amazing. Then after that, it talks about the people who are going to go to hellfire, what their problems were. So again it says, فَلَا صَدَّقَ وَلَا صَلَّى وَلَكِنْ كَذَّبَ وَتَوَلَّى يَتَمَطَّى أَوْلَى فَأَوْلَى سُدَى Basically, they never used to give sadaqah, they never used to pray. But they used to deny and they used to turn away. Right? Thereafter that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks a question at the end from verse 36. Do you think that humans have been created for no reason, just like that? Do you think this university, you see, it's like saying, this madrasa, this school, this seminary, this university, this college, you just come in there and mess around. There's no purpose of it. We just made it so you can come, pretend you're studying, and just mess around. It's a party school. It's crazy. Do you think we've created humans for that purpose? Do you think the insan has been created without purpose? Allah says, Didn't, didn't we create you? Basically, wasn't he just a fluid? And now you become this whole individual with conscience, and with thought, and intelligence, and all this arrogance. ثُمَّ كَانَ عَلَقَةً Then he became, you know, talks about the, the, the stages فَخَلَقَ فَسَوَى Allah created and then he, he, he balanced فَجَعَلَ مِنْهُ الزَّوْجَيْنِ الذَّكَرُ وَالْأُنْثَى Made male and female 
God who's got ability over all of these things, can he not re-enliven the deceased, the dead? Now, in this regard, um, what I want to mention is there's a very miraculous verse. I mean, they're all miraculous, but this one we've discovered. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says right at the beginning, if you've been following on verse 4, he says, do you, uh, verse 3 starts off, does the insan think that we can't gather his bones together? So to make him back, like, because this is how can resurrection be? So Allah is mentioning that. N- not only can we bring that together, we are able, ala an nusawwiya banana. We're able to actually reconstruct and redo his fingertips. Like we can do his entire body up to his fingertips. Now, who would have known in that time that everybody's fingertip has a unique code, unique coding on it, the fingertip, the fingerprint. And today they're basically using that throughout the world and that database, you know, you, while you can get two which are slightly similar, but everybody is unique. Just, what is that? Like two centimeters by one centimeter square and Allah has shown His power in that, that every single human being that will come into this world will have a different fingertip, meaning a different fingerprint. And that's what Allah mentions here. Right? That's a miracle of the Quran that specifically is mentioned there when a time they never had any idea that they're all unique. And today Allah has given it, maybe it's because our iman is so less that we need these kind of miracles. Right? So that's another miracle of the Quran. That somebody who had no idea about never been in a laboratory, never had you know fingerprint testing, right, and could figure these things out. Okay, the next surah is Surah Al Dahr, right? Qiyamah is called Surah Al Qiyamah because it discusses the Qiyamah. That's why it's called Qiyamah, right? The Day of Judgment. The next one is Surah Al Dahr. Dahr means time, and it's talking about a particular time. It's reminding the humans about. That's why it starts again. This is one of my favorites. I love to read this on Friday because Sunnah to recite this on Friday mornings in uh, in Fajr prayer with. Uh, surah, uh, surah to Sajda. This is what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to do. And this Surah, you know, I, I keep telling you that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has a persuasion and dissuasion. So sometimes there's more persuasion and a bit of dissuasion. In some places it's a bit of dissuasion, mostly persuasion. And do you know what this Surah is all about? Is it more persuasion or dissuasion? It's got both. But what is it? More Targheeb or more Tarheeb? So this is a Surah, it's got more Targheeb. It's got a bit of Targheeb, but then mashallah, it's just all tar- Targheeb. Amazing depiction of paradise, the drinks of paradise, the, 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 the spouses of paradise, the, 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 the servants of paradise, and uh, the flavors and the, the types of drinks. All of that is mentioned. I wish we could have sat here and enjoyed the discussion on that with more time. But again, it's just to help us to enjoy it in the future. right? So now this surah, as opposed to all the other surahs before it, is a Madani surah. So it's a Madinan surah, but to be honest... 31 verses, two sections, it sounds like a Makki, verse, Makki surah. So it's got the same kind of theme. It's all about paradise and hellfire. Right? Just in Medina Munawara, just to remind them again, this new surah came and it's extremely lyrical. It is so flowing. It is so lucid. Right? The cadence of it is amazing. And you can read it and you just don't stop. You just love to carry on reading it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts off by asking that hasn't a time come upon the, didn't a time come upon the insan, a particular time, when he was nothing to be mentioned. Saying, you know, as I said the other day, uh, I've got no r- part to play in the fact that I was called Abdul Rahman or that I was even brought into this world. That's purely from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? That's purely from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's what Allah is reminding that did you even have to come into this world? You are mumkin. You're just a possibly existent being by your very nature. You didn't have to be here. So hasn't a time come upon the insan when he was nothing to be mentioned. We then created the insan from this nutfatin amshaj, from the fluid, right? So we can test them, we can, and we make him listening and hearing. So he can hear and listen. We give them these faculties. Then we give them guidance of the right path. Then we see, imma shakiran wa imma kafura. Beautiful. Inna hadaynahu sabila imma shakiran wa imma kafura. Either he's going to be the grateful or he's going to be of the ungrateful. That's how it begins. And then after that, Allah says, for the ungrateful ones, we've produced hellfire. Right? And he, just, just one verse. That's just verse 4 about hellfire. That's it. That's what we prepared for them. Some aspects of hellfire. 
the the chains that's what you're discussing the chains and the and the uh, and the shackles and so on then after that says the righteous ones they're going to drink from cups whose flavor is going to be camphor I could sit here and enjoy this right before iftar subhanallah but we don't have the time I'll let you enjoy it yourself okay with your families inshallah read this at iftar time uh, just read the translation of it the next so many verses all the way until verse 22 uh, 23 is all about paradise all about paradise and a few things um, about the people who do this Because Allah always mentions that uh, Some of the people who are like this They're people who fulfill their vows they fearful of hellfire They're fearful of the day of judgment rather And number three They always feed the people they, they, they feed the poor And the orphans And they also do something for the prisoners Right So they're given these, they're given these things because Because look it says here Innama nuti'imukum um, verse 7, 8 and 9 That is They fulfill their vows They give uh, they, they feed people food Despite the fact that they love the food themselves They feed the miskeen The yatim and the asir Right That's the poor person That's the orphan And that's the prisoner Now for most of us It may be difficult to Feed prisoners but what you can do is there are organizations both in America I know uh, There's somebody there I know who works with prisoners And there's lots of chaplains here that you can contact Lots of We've got lots of ulama who are chaplains Who you can contact to fulfill this one day Inshallah I'm going to try to do this straight after, after this class I've got a chaplain sitting here and I'm going to talk to him to do this So we can Because everything we learn from the Quran I mean, never thought about doing this before to be honest We've helped out in, in case, but never because we read it in the Quran Right? So we should do that And then Allah makes it very clear in verse 9 We only feed them for the pleasure of Allah لا نريد منكم جزاء ولا شكورا. We don't need any recompense from you We don't need even thanks from you right? We do this purely for the pay, uh, fear of Allah And we fear from our Lord that very tough day But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says He's going to protect him from that day And he's going to give him all of these bounties and happiness Right. The last part of this surah Again, I said that you please read it yourself and ponder over it, get a good translation and do it. Uh, from verse 24 to the end, it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna nahnu nazzalna alayka al Quran tanzila. We reveal this Quran to you. Fasbir li hukmi rabbik. So be patient upon the commands of your Lord and do not ever follow any of their sinners or their disbelievers. Uh, sorry, their ungrateful ones. Remember the name of your Lord morning and evening and also at night. Do sujood for him and also do long glorification of him. These people, they want, they, they love this world. And, you know, they've thrown, uh, everything else be, uh, they've thrown everything else behind their back and so on. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then ends it by saying, Allah enters whoever, wishes, whoever he wishes into his mercy. And those who are oppressors, Allah has prepared for them a severe punishment. And that's how this surah ends. And finally, we have the last surah. We've, all, we've gone over time. Uh, I, I seek forgiveness. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. This is Surah Al Mursalat. Mursalat comes from the word irsal. Arsala yursilu irsal, which means to send. So Mursalat means those which are sent. So in the first five verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is swearing oaths by major phenomena. Two things. One, in the first three verses, it's about the, the, the winds that do different functions. Wal mursalati urfa. فَالْعَاصِفَاتِ عَصْفَا وَالنَّاشِرَاتِ نَشْرَا فَالْفَارِقَاتِ فَرْقَا فَالْمُلْقِيَاتِ ذِكْرَا Those are about the angels. عُذْرًا أَوْ نُذْرًا إِنَّمَا تُوْعَدُونَ لَوَاقِعُ This is similar to الذَّارِيَاتِ right? And again, if you take Arbery's translation, you'll really enjoy his translation. If you understand the meaning, you'll really un enjoy because he's tried to recreate this whole effect of وَالْمُرْسَلَاتِ عُرْفَا It's quite phenomenal, you know, in Arabic when you read that. So that's all taken an oath with that, that what you have been warned about is surely going to occur. Then Allah starts by discussing the day of judgment. Allah calls this day the Yawm al Fasl, the day of distinction, the day of distinguishment. 
where everything is going to become very clear. There's going to be no confusion anymore who's good and who's bad. Now, in this surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions a certain phrase over and over again, ten times, right? وَيْلٌ يَوْمَ إِذَنْ لِلْمُكَذِّبِينَ was mentioned in Surah Rahman here. It's Wailun Yoma Idilil Mukadhimin. Ten times. Destruction on that day for the deniers. Destruction on that day for the deniers. Over and over again. And then Allah mentions something. Didn't we destroy the first people? Did we then not follow them up with others? This is exactly what we do with the transgressors. Again, woe and destruction be for the deniers. Didn't we create you? Allah is reminding people. Didn't we create you from the fluid? Allah discusses that. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah. Alam naja'alil arda kifata. He mentions several different ideas in the heavens and the earth. Didn't we make the earth for you, um, giving you life and everything else in there? We gave you water to drink. But woe be upon the, dis- the, the, the deniers. Thereafter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then talks about the day of judgment. This is the day when they're not going to speak. They're not going to be given permission to even make excuses. Again, destruction on that day for the deniers. This is the day of distinction. We've gathered you and all the people before you. And thereafter that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings in some mention of the righteous ones. That they're going to be in shade. And they're going to be in, uh, 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 with uh, streams and fruits that they love. And then Allah says, Kulu washrabu hani bima kuntum ta'malun. You eat and drink, welcome, uh, you know, uh, uh, for all the good that you used to do, right? Inna kadarika najzil muhsini. This is how we recompense the good doers. And again, destruction be for those who deny. And then about those who deny, saying, okay, you guys eat and enjoy for a short while, but you are transgressors. Um, then after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions why. He says that they would be asked to make ruku, to prostrate, but they would not prostrate. Again, وَيْلٌ يَوْمَ إِذِلْ لِلْمُكَذِّبِينَ Destruction be on that day for the deniers. فَبِأَيِّ حَدِيثٍ بَعْدَهُ يُؤْمِنُونَ Allah leaves that with that last phrase there, that which discussion, which discourse after this will they believe in? They don't believe in this discourse of the Qur'an, what are they going to believe in? And by that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ends this surah. And by that, our 29th juz ends as well. And I have hope, inshallah, that tomorrow, inshallah, we will be able to complete 30th juz. Two minutes for each juz. Two to three minutes for each, sorry, two to three minutes for each surah, inshallah. Please pray to Allah that Allah accept this from us. Allah open up our hearts. We have so many takeaway messages from this. Allah improve our life, improve our iman, improve our health and improve our spirituality and outlook and make us much more connected people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, I've personally benefited from this. I did this for myself first, and I hope that you benefit as well. That's going to come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It all comes from Allah. And may Allah, these last moments of Ramadan, may Allah make them useful and beneficial for us. We've been given an extra day. Alhamdulillah, we've been given an extra day, 30 days of Ramadan. And for some people, maybe it's still 29, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. Wa akhiru da'wana anil hamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad.